Hey guys and welcome to another Python tutorial here on the Coders Legacy channel. In this video we'll take a look at the Pickle library, which is an object serialization library, and the BZ2 library, which is a compression library. So both of these libraries are pretty, you know, pretty well-known libraries in Python, at least Pickle is. BZ2 is a little more niche. Pickle basically is used, you know, it's an object serialization library, which means that it's used to convert Python objects like lists, dictionaries, and other things to a byte stream. Okay, this byte stream can then be saved to a file and then reloaded on a later date to basically be used. Okay, and that byte stream can be converted back into a Python object. So it's like you're representing Python objects in, a, in the form of bytes. Okay, so that's pickle. BZ2 is basically a library that compresses byte streams, okay, and uses a series of algorithms and encoding to basically make the byte stream a lot smaller. And, and I'm pretty sure you can already see the correlation. Pickle converts objects into byte streams, and then we can use BZ2 to compress those byte streams. Because sometimes when dealing with very large data sets, uh, Pickle can you know, come up with very large file sizes, okay? And this can be a problem. Loading and saving you know, becomes a hassle because the original point of Pickle is really to help us save time and you know, uh, to be efficient because we can just create our data set once, save it somewhere, and whenever we need it, we can just load it back up. But if the data set, if the data set that Pickle produces the byte stream that Pickle produces, if it's so large, then we're kind of, you know, having issues here, okay? And uh, that's the last thing we want. So we'll be using BZ2 to compress that byte stream, okay? And we'll be comparing the size, okay? We'll check the size before BZ2 was applied, and we'll be checking the, the size of the byte stream after BZ2 was applied, okay? And then we'll, I'm sure we'll see a very significant difference, okay? But uh, that's enough for now. Let's go ahead and begin. What I'm going to do is begin preparing our data set. Okay, I'm going to create a class called student over here. And uh, basically, we're going to be creating a whole bunch of objects out of this. Okay. Uh, yeah, basically. Okay, so I'm just taking in some parameters over here, some standard things that every student should have. Okay, a name, an ID, a gender, obviously. Okay. And I'll create also a utility function, okay, called display that prints out all this information, okay. So uh, let's just do this like this, I guess. This should be good enough. Okay, uh, self.name over here, then uh, ID over here, okay, self.id, and what's the last one? Gender, okay. And we're done. This is pretty much what our student class looks like. Now, what I want to do is import a new library, random, okay? The reason for this is because I want to, you know, try and prepare a realistic data set over here, okay? Uh, I'm trying to, you know, replicate a real life situation, a real life situation where we might have a database where we have 100 students, okay? 100 different students. So what I want to do is, uh, you know, try and create a randomized set of data containing uh, uh, like 100 students instead of something that just has five or six students with similar names. Okay, so you'll, you'll understand what I'm doing here in a minute. Okay, and let, let me just come up with some names here. Okay, and uh, what else? Okay, good enough. Here are some, some names I've come up with and let's write a few genders over here. Wait, why am I writing self? Okay, um, uh, M and O for other. Okay, and good. Now what I'm going to do is run a for loop a hundred times and you guys might find this useful because this technique over here that I'm using right now with the random library that I'm, that I'm about to use, it's actually pretty interesting. And you can go check out the random library videos and website links I have in the description below if you're interested. It's a pretty powerful library. But basically what I'm doing here is this data over here, which is an empty list right now, I'm going to be appending 100 student objects to it. Okay, like this. What's the first parameter? The name. So I'm going to do random.choice, and this selects a random name from this list. Okay, so I'm trying to create something fairly realistic over here. Okay, and I'll just use the, uh, you know, like the first time this runs, the student ID will be one, the second time it runs, the ID will be two. 
okay and the third one will be random dot choice genders good okay so here's our data set prepared okay and if I print this out here we can see that we have a fairly uh, okay that doesn't print it out exactly how we want it uh, that this is basically one object uh, what I should do actually is uh, data x dot this play okay and this should show us exactly how we want it okay so basically you get the point we have some fairly varied data over here it's not perfect but it's good enough okay and the reason I actually want to do this is because I want to try and make our compression realistic okay because compression can change the compression efficiency can change depending on how similar the data is how large the data set is so I'm trying to come up with a realistic scenario okay and I'll actually go ahead and, and increase this to a thousand okay now time to use pickle what I'm gonna do is O file is equal to and by the way if you don't understand anything here or you want further clarification be sure to check out the bz2 and the pickle uh, you know videos separately okay and over here I'm gonna do open okay and I'm gonna uh, save the file as binary data WB for write binary and O file dot sorry not O file I'm gonna use pickle dot dump and this takes the object to you know be pickled and this takes the file, O file, and now we just close it. Okay, we're done. Now this should, uh, you know, let's just do this. Okay, this will create that file over here, a 30 KB file. Okay, now, now what I want to do is basically show you the difference between doing it normally and with, uh, you know, doing it um, with BT2. So what, I, what I'm going to do here is import the OS library okay and print os dot get sorry path dot get size and pass in the file name binary data okay and print this out hold on there's uh okay now so what this does is print out this this file size 30143 great okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this a bit instead of opening this with the standard file with the standard python file handling method open I'm going to use bz2, bz2.open or bz2.bz2 file, these are the same thing, okay, if I do this, we end up with a file size of 5,718, that's more than a five times the difference, that's pretty amazing, honestly, and our data was varied enough over here, and you know what, let's just go ahead and try making it a little more varied, okay, I'm just throwing in some random things over here, whatever comes to mind, uh, okay, I don't know what, um, let's throw in some random stuff, and, uh, okay, and just throw in some random stuff over here, honestly, I'm just doing this to increase the varied, you know, make things more varied over here, okay, so, let's just run this again, okay, this file size is a bit larger, now, um, what I believe is that uh, the reason for this is because um, the more varied the data becomes, the less... Wait, hold on, what? Oh, sorry, I'm using the bc2. .open. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. So it's, it's a bit larger. It went from 30,143 to 30,208, but uh, we can observe in that the ratio has changed a bit instead of more than five times efficiency it's decreased to a little less than five times and this again i mentioned this earlier but the more varied your data is the more um, the lower your compression efficiency actually goes okay and the reason for this if i remember correctly because i have studied algorithms and encoding at one point there's the huffman encoding which is basically one of the algorithms used inside bt2 but the basic idea behind it was, if I remember correctly, was that um, if uh, what happens is that it tries to find patterns, okay? What happens is that it sort of comes up with code names for long patterns inside the, the data, okay? And then it basically makes abbreviated versions of them, okay? So the more similar that data is, 
okay, the more effective its algorithm is going to be. And this is a whole topic, okay, so it's best if you go search this up individually, okay. But the gist of it is that the more similar your data is, the better the compression of efficiency, okay. So in the case of highly varied data, you can expect, you know, not a, a lot of, of comp compression efficiency, okay. And especially in the BZ2 video that I did, I compressed a string with fairly unique data. So we didn't even see, uh, you know, a 2x improvement, okay? It just went from 750 to like 500, okay? So that wasn't much, 50%. It's still a big deal, but not too much. But basically, yeah, this is basically what it is. This is basically uh, the combination of Pickle and BT2. I hope you guys learned something new today and are maybe interested in learning more, okay? So do let me know what you thought and make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave some comments, leave some feedback, okay? And I'll see you guys hopefully in some other Python video of ours. Later.